in a in a in an approach and in a way that that way you understand how to have these conversations with your sellers and more so when you are also conducting open houses and people are actually coming into the uh, to the homes. So the uh, first is the LOHA form, which is better known as the Listing Agreement Open House Addendum. Now, this is when you're going for a listing, right? There's no specific language that allows us to understand what has happened in the last year. So this is a supplement to the listing agreement. This is why it's called the Listing Agreement Open House Addendum. You're adding this additional form into the listing agreement. And all you're doing is giving specific um, directions and understanding to the seller. And the seller has the ultimate decision, folks, the decision to say yes, to allow you to do open houses or no to allow to do open house. And why this form is very, very important is because even if you're verbally saying, well, you know, part of my marketing is to conduct open house and uh, find a buyer for the home or showcase your home to the best, you know, you want to protect yourself in case of a situation. But what that situation can be is someone contracts the, uh, the virus and now they start pointing fingers and saying, well, it's because of your open house I uh, contracted the uh, virus. Now, <clears throat> there hasn't been any case studies regarding that that I'm aware of. But I know that it's going to be very, very, very hard to uh, determine where you actually got, you know, the virus from, and to say, well, I got it because of all the people that were at the uh, at the open house, is again, it's a catch twenty two. And the reason I say that is because you can contract the virus anywhere. You can be at the market. You can be at the gas station. You know, pumping fuel. You can be anywhere and pick up the uh, virus. So it's really hard to determine where exactly you got it. But the California Association of Realtors, the state of California, and you know, real estate companies want to protect them, themselves from a potential liability because you just never know if a claim will ever arise from this. We need to make sure that we protect ourselves and ultimately disclose our position, okay? So here it is, folks. <clears throat> the listing agreement addendum really defines the position is again a supplement to the listing agreement. Now, you know, pretty much a standard information, you know, the uh, subject property address. But here, this is where I need you to really focus on is paragraph number one, where it says open houses. Seller agrees or does not agree to allow broker to hold an open house for prospective uh, purchasers and other visitors to enter the property as specified below, okay? Here it is. If the uh, seller says no to open house, we have to abide by those terms, meaning we cannot do an open house, okay? Now, it, it's a little bit specific, but it's also a little bit vague because you can come and say, well, Simon, this says open house or prospective purchasers. What if a, a prospective purchaser is with a buyer and wants to preview the home because they want to submit an offer? Well, this declines both position, okay? Meaning that the seller will not allow even showing the property until we actually maybe have an executed offer or an offer in place before they allow you to come into the uh, home. Now, you know, you, you got to weigh it out, right? The pros and cons and ultimately where you stand with this. Because if the seller says no to open houses, <clears throat> you know, it's saying we are not allowing anyone to come into the property in an open house scenario. Now, Section 1A-B also says we'll require to register. So if the seller does allow us to do an open house, we're putting parameters in place, folks. And this is very, very important for you to understand your position when the seller says, okay, we have no problem. We want to expose the property. And if you feel that open houses is very crucial in, in bringing in more potential buyers, then here are the specifics of what we're requiring. Now, 1A says, you know, we're required to register at the property by way of signing a sheet or digital sign in or provide a broker with a Corona property entry advisory declaration, which is better known as the PEED. Okay. Now there was a lot of confusion regarding the PEED even a year ago when all this started. Now they have eliminated each and every PEED and now it's only one. 
And that peed is now called the peed all, okay? A-L-L, -L, the peed all. So either in advance or in the time of entry. So what it's saying here is to the seller, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, <clears throat> you're acknowledging the fact that we will be hosting open houses once we have the listing agreement executed and signed and part of the marketing campaign is we will do open houses, okay? With that being said, you're also allowing us to, you know, digitally or sign in that anyone that is going to be coming into the property to sign in what's called a PED. And that PED gives specific uh, language that says the following, and I'll share what the uh, PED says, you know, the, the uh, potential and the risk factors uh, of contracting the uh, virus from, you know, doing an open house. Okay, section B goes and says that by signing the PED shall contain that the agreement to follow broker prevention plan and abide by the uh, post rules for entry, as well a statement that enacts does not have COVID-19, okay, COVID-19 been in uh, contact with someone with uh, COVID in the last 10 days. So it's putting a disclaimer, folks, and that disclaimer is very, very clear saying, if you have any symptoms of the virus, then you shouldn't be first and foremost out and about looking at homes. And more so, we, we can declare that if we see any symptoms, that it, it is best for all parties not to allow you to come into the, uh, to the home. And because of this form, it protects you, it protects the brokerage, and it protects the seller as well, okay? So again, please feel free to uh, ask questions if you uh, have any very specific questions regarding any of the, uh, of the forms that I will be talking about today, okay? Section number two says that showing requirements, a prospecting purchaser or other visitors must use face coverings. Now, here's the thing, today is June 15. And as of today, my understanding, I haven't heard otherwise, that they have lifted the requirements to have a face mask in common areas, okay? But here's, here's the big picture, folks. And I, again, it's really your discretion. There's still a lot of people that are very sensitive when it comes to exposing yourself and uh, not having a face mask on. I would say that for the protection and the well-being of everyone, in, and in, 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 if you're doing an open house, I would encourage you, you know, just wear your mask. You know, it protects yourself. It, it protects, you know, other people as well. You know, until we get further information from, you know, CDC or from the state or from the California Association of Realtors, I think it's best practice to continue. You know, I know that right now, more and more people are being vaccinated and uh, we're seeing more people getting a little bit more comfortable. But I say, you know, until we hear otherwise, let's keep that routine of wearing our mask, okay? So part two shows requirements, okay? Obviously face coverings uh, allow social distance between themselves and others that are not a member uh, or, you know, a family in itself. Must agree to wash their hands or use some type of hand sanitizer prior to entry. Now, here it is, folks. If you're gonna be hosting an open house, which is fun and exciting, if you um, haven't done an open house, especially if you're a newer agent that got your real estate license or got into real estate while the, uh, the pandemic was, was here, you probably never had the opportunity to do an open house. And now it gives you a, uh, a, a good way of you know, hosting. Now it's not the norm like we used to, you know, we have guidelines, we have rules and regulations to ultimately protect everyone on the, uh, on the premises. So if you are going to start hosting open houses, my, uh, my encouragement to you is do anything and everything to protect everyone that comes in. Okay. It's just good practice and peace of mind that you or someone would not contract the coronavirus. Because again, there's a lot of people that unfortunately do not believe in the uh, vaccine or just refuse to um, you know, take the shot. And that's perfectly fine. Beauty is we are not mandated. It's there as an option. 
and anyone that would like to get vaccinated is there. I mean, I, I don't see that as a problem, but that's just me, okay? Section 2B goes, fresh outside air shall be uh, induced into the property, for example, opening doors and windows. Absolutely, it's common sense, folks. You know, now as we approach the summer, right, the summer's just upon us, you know, it may get a little bit warm. So you have to kind of weigh it out and use, again, common sense, you know, open up all the uh, windows to let the breeze come in and ventilate the house and keep anything uh, open for the sake of ventilation. You know, you don't want to be cooped up into a uh, house and uh, there's no circulation of the air. Now, yeah, the summer is upon us and it's going to start getting a little bit hotter, depending on where you're hosting an open house, will determine the, uh, you know, how hot it, it can be. You know, and I've been in homes and probably a lot of you have been in homes that uh, are, are nice and cool without any AC. And there's just some houses that just feel really clustered and warm and hot because of poor in, uh, insulation, you know, you have to, um, you got to use proper common sense on it. I'd say, you know, if there's no AC, open up all the uh, windows uh, back door to let the breeze go in. If there's AC, maybe use a combination, you know, again, out of respect of the sellers, you know, you don't want to put the AC and have all the windows, but that's something that we have to also take into consideration. One, to comply what we have with the uh, coronavirus, but more so the protection for you and, and anyone uh, coming into the uh, to the uh, premises. Okay. Section C: uh, Commonly touched surfaces and areas shall be clean and disinfected on a regular inter, uh, intervals at least once per day. Again, going back, you know some of the rules and regulations, folks, and this is again proper practice. Now, one thing we don't have to wear is latex gloves anymore. You know, there were such a pain to have, but that is not something you need to, only if you want to. Okay, if you feel that you need that extra layer of protection, by all means, wear latex gloves, but it's not necessary. We have hand sanitizer that you can spray, um, you know, the surface of a countertop, the uh, doorknobs. Anything that you feel that a client or a potential uh, uh, purchaser may be uh, frequently doing, then you want to do on a regular basis. Just you know, make sure you disinfect the area. Okay. Again, you know, it all depends on the circumstances. Okay. You know, some homes are large, some homes are are smaller. You know, it may be a little bit faster to do so. Whereas a bigger home, you might need assistance or help, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about having an assistant, more so right now because of low inventory, right? There's just so many buyers looking for an opportunity that it may just be a little tight, a little difficult, a little challenging for you to also be hosting your own open house by yourself. You may need the assistance of, uh, you know, a partner or someone that can help you delegate a lot of the uh, people coming in and out of the uh, of the home. Okay. All right. So <laughs> the scope of a uh, broker duties. Okay. And, and again, it's laying it out very defined. Seller understands and agrees that the broker will buy by the terms of the addendum. Uh, all uh, sign-in sheets and P forms signed by and received by the broker or any person entry the property. Uh, broker cannot and will not verify the representation of others or nor guarantee their compliance with seller and broker instructions. Broker cannot and will not physically prevent entrance to the property by others who do not agree to the instructions. If broker becomes aware of such personal failure to comply with the instructions, broker will promptly inform seller and take efforts to prevent such person's future access to the property. Seller wants the uh, potential benefits and assumes the risk of allowing others to enter the property, seller releases broker and its agents from any loss, liability, expense, claim, or cause of action that arise from allowing entry upon the uh, property or related in any manner to this addendum. Documentation, broker provides seller with a coronavirus entry advisory declaration, which is the uh, uh, form PED all. And then also the uh, best practice guidelines and prevention plan, which is the BP, PP, or uh, equivalent form or document providing that the broker rules of entry shall be posted in a visible location by the front entrance 
uh, car form document PRE, okay? So there you go, folks. <clears throat> this is the supplement that goes aligned with any listing. So include this as part of your practice now when you are going on a listing appointment and you're executing the listing agreement. And part of this agreement, you know, you want to promote and um, uh, do open houses, then this is an addendum that puts that uh, position in place that allows you as the uh, agent, the brokerage and the seller, the principal owners of the, uh, of the home in compliance and understanding. So there is no misunderstanding, no misrepresentation. You give them a copy of this once they execute it, okay? Then they sign and date and uh, you, you put your information as well. Any additional terms, okay? This additional terms can be anything. You know, maybe the seller say, we do not want anyone to enter you know, uh, one of the bedrooms, as an example, maybe there's an elderly uh, family member that uh, stays there and they are concerned because of the health reasons. So they can specify which area or which room are they allowed to go in and out of, okay? So if the sellers are telling you, well, Simon, you know, we're okay, you hosting an open house, but I do not want bedroom number three to be entered by anyone because that is where my mother stays. That is where my parents stay and they're up in age and they do have some borderline health issues that we are concerned. No problem, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. I'll document that so that way I have documentation that we agree that uh, room number three will not be entered by anyone, including myself. Now, we also wanna have this very concise conversation and explaining to the seller, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, if when we accept an offer, the buyer has the right, okay, to do their due diligence regarding the overall condition of the property. Therefore, at that point in time, please understand that part of the buyer's process, they also have the ability to go to room number three and inspect the property or have someone in uh, in the uh, profession of a home inspector to allow them to do a thorough spe uh, inspection of the, uh, of the room. And there's nothing that the uh, seller can do about that. They have to uh, abide by that because again, it's part of the disclosures, right? It's part of the uh, requirements, what we call the uh, due diligence process for both the buyer and the seller, okay? So that's where you would put additional terms if there's something specific that the seller is not allowing us to do, then by all means, document it, okay? And I stress the fact, the importance of documentation because you're not gonna remember a conversation that you had two, three weeks ago, but when you go back and look at your file and realize, oh, okay, this is what we talked about, then you'll know exactly, that'll recollect your mind and it'll be fresh in your mind saying, okay, now I know the reason why we're not allowed to go into bedroom number three, okay? Any questions regarding the listing agreement open house addendum? Okay, cool. All right, the next one, and the beauty is that the LOHA form also attaches the Corona Property Advisory PEED as well, okay? So you don't have to do all the scrambling. It's already concise and it's already in one package deal. So the next follow-up is the uh, property entry advisory and declaration, okay? Better known as the PEED. And for the longest time, folks, there was PEDs uh, for buyers, PEDs for tenants, PEDs for sellers, PEDs for visitors. It was so confusing. And all that it had, it was, you know, just specific language to specific, uh, you know, buyers or sellers uh, that it didn't make any sense. So the uh, California Association of Realtors got smart and said, look, let's just do one, one form that covers everything. And here you go, folks, this is what it is. I know there's a question, uh, just bear with me. I think it was Mona. So uh, Mona, just uh, bear with me on that question, okay? All right, so the um, property entry advisory and declaration is the form that is used by all, all persons entering and allowing access to the uh, property, okay? It applies to all person uh, access, which can be the seller, the uh, tenant, the landlord, uh, property managers, the broker's agent, or any person that uh, is allowed to be in there, 
One, if you're hosting an open house, right? There you go. You're allowed to utilize this form for that purpose. Now, I want you to really uh, concentrate on the bold and uh, uh, darker area of this form. It says, hey, visitor does not need to sign a separate form for which property or every entry, but instead may provide a copy of a signed PED to the occupant or broker or agent representing the occupant. This form should not be used if circumstances change and the representations are no longer accurate. So meaning that if, uh, if a buyer is uh, looking at property to property, they should have one copy of this and they can also provide this or their uh, agent can provide this. Now, if this buyer changes agents, changes brokerage, then unfortunately the new agent, the new uh, brokerage would have to redo this form and submit that form to the listing agent or anyone hosting this. So the two forms can be uh, where the agent can submit this prior to showing a property or even prior to uh, you know, uh, showing an open house home. Now, Simon, you, you're probably saying, well, Simon, if they're doing an open house, why do we need to send this form, right? Well, the answer is you don't. You don't have to send this particular form, the PED all, if an agent or a listing agent is hosting an open house. But with that being said, does that mean that you're allowed to uh, go into the property? The answer is no, you're not allowed. The listing agent or someone that's hosting the open house will provide you with their form to sign in, which was in compliance to the uh, coronavirus. Okay, so if it's an open house, and I just want to be very crystal clear here, if someone is hosting an open house, then you do not have to submit a PEAT. Okay, but if you if they're not hosting an open house and you're actually previewing the home and you have a set schedule, then yes, this PED form must be provided to the uh, listing agent. Okay, question. Yes, um, I have a question, Simon. Yes. Well, I was wondering because I heard that today. PEDs are no longer necessary, but now we're talking about the PED all form. So I'm very confused. Are we still using the PED all form or are we done with it? You know, as, as of yet until the California Association uh, declares, because here's the thing, the listing agent may still request the PED. And if the PED is still part of our uh, zip forms, then unfortunately the listing agent can abide by those terms and say, look, for the protection of everyone, then the answer is yes. Now that, uh, now that we have the uh, June 15, things are gonna start looking a little different. So I wouldn't be surprised folks that moving forward, this document will be released. It's by discretion, okay? If they said, you know, it's no longer utilized, then I want to see it off zip forms or not part of it. But again, I'm still seeing on the MLS, please provide a PED. And, you know, if that's the agreement that the, uh, that the agent is requesting, then we can say, yeah, you know what, but today is the 15, we don't need to utilize this form. The seller and the principal may still say otherwise, saying no, unfortunately, I get what that means, but it goes back to what I was saying earlier about the uh, face max. Okay. What I said, what I what I'm what I'm saying is that people will be comfortable with uh, without mask. And then there's going to be people that are still going to be comfortable wearing a mask. So it's going to be a, uh, a a discretion if they want to you know, utilize the um, face mask or not. And that goes to this form. For the time being, you're probably correct. I haven't heard it otherwise, but you're probably right. You, they probably said peds are no longer necessary. And that's great because that's one more less paperwork that you got to submit on top of everything else that we're submitting, right? You know, the agency disclosure, the wire fraud, the possible representation agreement, and then the purchase agreement and all this other other forms that we have to submit just to go and um, look at properties and uh, you know submit offers. 
So, you know, I haven't heard it personally, but you're probably right. Maybe they said no more PEDs are required and that's great. So for the time being, I'm still pressing our office to utilize it as long as it still shows on the um, on zip forms. If they tell us different or I hear differently, then we can take that discretion and say it's by option and choice. That's simple. OK, that's a good question, Mona. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? OK, let's uh, let's continue. <clears throat> so the principal acknowledges an authorization. Principal is a volunteer entry or allowing others to enter the property. There you go. It's a volunteer. Now, <clears throat> can a seller say, for example, you are not uh, allowed to come into my property if you do not sign this PED, okay? You have to abide by that. Just like let's take away any of the uh, PED forms. Let's just take all the PEDs out of the equation. And you're hosting an open house. And part of the requirement that your seller specifies is, okay, Simon, I will allow you to do an open house, but in order for you to do an open house, I want you to make sure that you have a registry and that you're having everyone sign that registry. If they do, if they do not sign that registry, then by all means, you can refuse entry per my request, okay? So this is the seller, this is the principal giving you specific requests in regards to anyone that will not sign off on the registry, okay? So there you go. Someone comes in, well, I'm working with an agent. I don't feel comfortable signing the registry. Um, that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. But unfortunately, under the, uh, under the instructions of the seller, the seller had mentioned to me that um, we are not uh, allowed to let anyone. So the only thing I can do is provide you with this flyer. It has photos, description, how many bedrooms, how many baths, and what the actual uh, amount is. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you know, please do so. Here's my contact information. Okay, question. Hi, Stephen, I have two questions. So the first question, when you're just talking about how right now, if somebody comes into an open house and they don't wanna sign in the form, is that the PED all or is that the sign-in sheet that you're referring to? I'm si uh, I was referring to the registry, not the PED. Okay, if so when people come in and you get their name and their email and all that. That is stuff. correct. Typically, when you're hosting an open house, you want to keep track of how many people come in. You know, one, for the sake of obviously trying to generate business, right? The whole purpose of doing an open house is for you to attract potential clients. Now, a lot may have, you know, representation. A lot of the uh, consumers that are coming in may be working with an agent. And that's perfectly fine if they're working with an agent. We will now poach them but we still wanna keep track of how many people come in. God forbid something happens, someone comes into the property, you're distracted, they take something or damage something and they don't say anything. Now you have at least a list of people that you can go back and talk and say, hey, you know what? Between this time and this time, we had you know, someone you know, take something. And as you're making those calls with those uh, people on the registry, it may include, you know, it's funny you say that because at the time that we were looking at the property, I saw this person, you know, um, you know, walk away with a box. And that'll kind of give you an idea, a time frame when that happened. So it's very important. And I know a lot of agents do not practice, you know, you know, the proper uh, way of hosting an open house. Now it's a discretion. I don't, I don't mean you have to force someone to sign, but it should be a, a, a common practice to do so. If the, uh, if the consumer is uh, not wanting to sign off on the form, that's okay. There's some agents that will say, okay, now, you know what? I'm not gonna force it, come in and all that stuff. For me in my personal experience doing this, I would you know, politely and professionally just say, you know, I completely understand, but unfortunately, 
uh, the, the seller has given me uh, instructions that if anyone does not want to sign off on the uh, registry, it's not for any recruiting or excuse me, it's not for any uh, uh, avenues to, you know, have you work with me. It's just keeping track record and uh, seeing how many people are coming into the open house because that's the information that later I will be providing to the, uh, to the seller. Okay. Any other questions or does that answer your question, Mona? Yes, I did have kind of like one more question slash comment. Okay. So this weekend, I actually did co-host an open house with another okay. two agents. And what we did for the sign-in sheet is we would ask uh, the client, oh, by the way, I'm in the office, by the way, you hear other people talking. So we would just ask the person's name. So let's say you came into open house. I'd write down your name. I'd ask if you're working with an agent. And then if you were, I would ask your agent's name and brokerage. Um, okay. That way we know who's coming in. Now we didn't log in the times and literally every single person who came in had an agent. There was nobody who was just without an agent there. Okay. However, if that had been the case, um, then of course it would be essential to get their information, phone number, email, et cetera. But in the case that they do have that agent, do you still ask for that phone number and email? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because one, we don't really know if they're actually working with an agent. They may say they're working with an agent, but I've come across and a lot of the agents have come across where they're really not, you know, and, um, you know, they say that because they don't want to be bothered. They don't want any um, any newsletters or any mailers or anything be sent out to them. And as long as you're you know upfront and very direct, you know we understand. You know we don't want to solicit anyone that is working with an agent. But what if the opportunity was there that they weren't, but they were using that as a front to kind of get an idea of what the home is, and you know you build that good relationship with them. They decide to say, well, you know, honestly, I was working with someone. I don't have anything signed. You know, they they haven't or he hasn't, she hasn't sent any um, new listings. We've been looking at open houses by ourselves. And therefore, you know, I think you would be a great person for us to uh, work with. So there you go. What started off as, yes, we're working with an agent can lead up to, no, we don't have anyone currently we want you to represent us, okay? So that's 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 the whole totality of why you ask for anyone that's coming. I, I understand. And, and for the most part, what I do and what uh, agents do is, okay, fantastic. Do you have a business card of your, of your agent? And if they have a business card, then all I say, you know, just put your name and uh, your agent's uh, name and then you can reference the agent that coincides with that with that buyer. So you don't want to get all that information, such as phone number, email, and, and um, you know any contact information, and that's perfectly fine. But if you do happen to have a situation, now you can call that agent, you know, John Smith. Hey, John Smith, uh, this is Simon over at Keller Williams. You know, your client, Mr. And Mrs. Uh, uh, Pomozzi, came in on Saturday at three o'clock. And unfortunately, you know, I'm reaching out because one, we had a, a, um, a situation here at the uh, home that one of the, uh, one of the uh, I don't know, pictures was broken or damaged. And we're just trying to see what transpire would happen if maybe your clients at that time saw something that they can give us information or something is missing or something is stolen. Oh, thank you so much. Let me reach out to them and ask that question. So there you go. That's the whole purpose of, um, you know, uh, uh, getting that information. Because if you don't have, if you don't have who is actually physically looking at the home, then how can you reference that, right? How can you go back to that agent is, well, you had some clients that came in on, on Saturday at three o'clock, you don't have their name. And what if this agent has multiple, multiple clients that they're working with, you know, he or she is not going to know that. That's why it's very important to register everyone that comes into the, uh, to the premises. But would you still try to get somebody's name, um, not to name, of course you get their name, but would you still try to get their email and phone number if they, 
um, already has an agent, at least try? Absolutely. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to ask. So let's kind of really quickly role play. So, you know, you're coming into my open house, Mona, and I introduce myself. Hey, this is Simon. Thank you so much for coming to the open house. Just a little bit about the home. This home is a three bedroom, two bath, uh, about 1,575 square feet on a 75 square lot built in 1955. It's currently listed for 975. It does have a pool, uh, phenomenal um, side with um, plantations. All the, uh, all the bedrooms have been upgraded and the uh, kitchen has been uh, remodeled and upgraded as well. Um, part of the requirement is if you can please just sign the registry with your name and number, okay? And email if you have it. Mona, you're gonna say, what? I'm working with an agent. So what would you say? Oh, um, I don't want to give my information. I'm, I'm working with an agent, so I'm okay. Thank you. Not a problem. I completely understand and respect that. Uh, do you have your uh, agent's information, a business card or something that I can reference to? No, um, I don't have, but I can give you their name and their brokerage. <laughs> okay. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead and put um, at least the, their uh, contact information on the registry. And if I can at least have your first name and last name, that's all I need. Okay, that's fine. Okay, all right, awesome, thank you. So, I mean, I try to uh, get the uh, information. Again, you can't force anyone to provide you with an email or a, a contact uh, uh, number. But, you know, here's the, the beauty is, and, you know, I, I know very successful agents that host open houses, I would love the opportunity to uh, put you in a drawing. You know, every month on the 25th, we, we uh, host a drawing for a $50 uh, gift card or $75 gift card or a $100 gift card. I would love for you to enter this, uh, this contest where you provide me with your email and contact information. You know, so that may be another avenue to um, pull, you know, the contact information. Well, I don't feel comfortable. Well, you're under no obligations. And then I can go back to my original say, well, unfortunately, you know, the, the sellers have, um, you know, instructed me if, if you feel uncomfortable signing on the registry, then unfortunately, the only thing I can do is provide you with, you know, the flyer. And if you'd like to schedule a private showing, we can always do that. Just have your agent reach out to me. Okay. Good stuff. Any other questions? Cool. All right. So let's uh, quickly uh, continue. So principal representation. To the best of the knowledge, you are currently uh, uh, if afflicted with uh, COVID-19. So uh, number two, you have not only within the last 10 days been con uh, contacted with someone inflicted with uh, COVID-19. You're not experiencing any symptoms which may include fever, signs of uh, re respiratory illness, such as uh, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulties breathing. You will inform broker if, the, the, if after the uh, date this uh, document is signed that there is a change in your health condition or knowledge that a potentially puts others at risk uh, in the representations made in this document in which case you will cease using the PEDA all as representation to any other persons. Uh, accommodating minors by signing below adults, principals acknowledge and agree that all property in, uh, entry rules and principal acknowledge and representations apply equally in any uh, occupying minors as they do to the uh, principal. Principal is responsible for the care, safety and conduct of any minors in the property. Any accommodating minor shall be identified in paragraph four, exemption to represent, uh, identify, or minors in an additional terms. So what it says right here is if they do, and again, this <clears throat> may be going somewhat a little overboard, but you know it's there for your protection. So let's say that you're hosting an open house or showing a property and they have small children. And what I mean by small children is anyone uh, probably from the age of 12, 14, or younger. Now, underage means underage, and that could be anyone under the age of 18, right? So I would say that if it's someone, because you're not going to determine someone that's 15, 16, may not look like they're 15 and 16, they may look older, okay? 
Uh, but someone that's small and they're, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, then this is where you're going to put this additional uh, information where you're putting the uh, children's uh, name here that, you know, the family here that's signing off had two small children as uh, part of the exemption of this representation. Okay. Agreement and declaration and assumption of risk by signing below principal is declaring and foregoing is true and that principal assumes the risk and of entering the property and allowing someone to enter the property. Principal understands and agrees that no one, including but limited to the broker agent can guarantee that you will not be exposed to the coronavirus or the COVID-19. By signing below, principal acknowledges, okay? So going back to the, uh, to the PEAT all, this is the principal, when they refer to principals, they're referring to anyone that is looking into buying a property, okay? Meaning, a buyer, an investor, a seller that is looking into buying, they all fill out this P, okay? Now, going back to Mona's uh, question earlier that as of today, that this coronavirus will not be in effect anymore. Great, that's awesome. Once I hear that and uh, we have it in writing, then by all means, my office will start implementing it and uh, you know, going with the emotions of what the requirements are. You know, we don't need more stack of paper, right? This is just another layer of additional documentation that unfortunately, because of the uh, pandemic last year, forced us to protect ourselves and disclose and uh, have these disclaimers to protect anyone from, you know, corona or inflicting coronavirus, okay? Any questions regarding uh, the uh, coronavirus entry to advisory, better known as the PEED? All right. Let's uh, quickly continue. So the mandatory government showing requirements is part of, uh, again, the rules and regulations when hosting an open house. Here is the uh, form that is a preventative plan. And uh, this has to be displayed somewhere where it's visible, okay, visible when uh, hosting an open house or when you list the property, it should be visible for anyone that's actually seeing the property, previewing the home, before making a determination if they're gonna submit an offer or not, or you know they're just looking in the neighborhood and they happen to come into the uh, property. So check with the city or county for restrictive local rules, okay? So preventative plan, okay? It goes through the motions of series of uh, questions, showing rules for listing and buyer agents. Agents conduct and showing should meet clients at the property and not drive the clients to the property. So again, it just putting parameters in place. Real estate license should remind clients to maintain physical distance during showing and refrain from touching handle uh, handles, switches, and, and uh, pulls. Uh, during showing, in induce fresh uh, outside air, for example, by opening doors, windows, uh, weather permitted, and operating ventilation systems. Okay, let's skip on that. Clean and disinfect. I think we all kind of understand the dynamics of disinfecting an area. If you're hosting an open house, Proper common uh, practices at the end of your of uh, hosting an open house, you know, do a quick little sanitation clean. You know, get uh, some type of disinfective, spray the areas, the doorknobs, uh, areas where there was you know uh, consumption of people walking around, and you know, just do it for the sake of having that conversation with your with your sellers. You know, after you host your open house, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, just wanted to let you know. We, our open house today was a total success. Uh, we had about 50, 60 families that stopped by. Uh, we're looking at you know, several offers coming in sometime this evening or possibly tomorrow. I also did the liberty of per the agreement to uh, you know, sanitize you know, some of the common areas, the doorknobs, the sliding uh, handles, you know, the kitchen area, the bathrooms. Uh, of that nature. So the house has been disinfected. Oh, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. So again, it's just part of the uh, you know common practice. Rules for visitors. Again, <clears throat> prior to entering the property, that form P must be signed, okay? Post rule of entry, which is the PRE, okay? All visitors must wear face covering. Now, until we hear otherwise, folks, again, just because let's say they lifted the, uh, <clears throat> they lifted the uh, uh, face mask, someone comes in with the face mask, are you gonna tell them, oh, by the way, we're not gonna allow you to come in because you have a face mask. <laughs> 
The answer is no, you're gonna allow them to come even though it's not required anymore. Guess what? There's gonna be a lot of people for at least several months now and maybe till the end of the year and maybe from now on, people are gonna feel more comfortable. We've had this for a whole year. A lot of us are really uh, used to it. I know that even today I went to lunch with our, with our lender and I forgot my mask in my vehicle and I realized, oh gosh, you know, I forgot my mask, you know, so it's already embedded in our minds, the importance of these uh, face masks, right? So just going forward, even though if the state and the uh, California Association of Realtors stops, uh, you know, or, or doesn't require us to wear a face mask, I can, I can tell you from, you know, personal experience, there's still going to be a lot of people that will still wear their masks. So just, you know, be respectful and mindful on that. And then rules for seller and occupants as, as well. Okay, so let me uh, let me go back here. That was <clears throat> that was part of the uh, listing agreement and open house addendum, which gives you all these forms. Now let me go into the pro uh, property visit and open house advisory, better known as the P, as in Paul, V as in Victor, O as in Ocean, H as in Henry. Okay. So here's another form that needs to be provided as part of your hosting an open house, okay? So <clears throat> the uh, open house advisory is risk of visiting and viewing properties, recorded devices, audio video recording devices, or both may be present on the property that is being visited or viewed and such device may be located both inside and outside of the main dwelling and any outbuilding or accessory unit or structure on the property. There may or may not be any notice of the presence of such a device post on the property. Seller may or may not be aware of all the features on such device. Such device may be ca uh, uh, capable of recording visitors' conduct, conversations, uh, and uh, interferences, and more. Accordingly, seller may be able to determine visitors' impressions of the property in any conditions, negotiation strategies, and other context of the uh, discussion visitors had. So basically what it's saying here is very simple. You know, now more so than ever, um, you know, a lot of people have uh, invested in uh, surveillance cameras, surveillance cameras inside, surveillance cameras outside. So be aware and be mindful Okay, that, you know, we're disclaiming all this and here's common practice for anyone, you know, and more so if you are not hosting an open house, but you are going to an open house and your goal and strategy is to, you know, make an offer. You don't know if any of these cameras are recording uh, this information. And if there is cameras, you'll, you'll probably see them from the outside. You may not be able to see them from the inside, but doesn't mean that no one is recording you. So what it's saying here is Mr. or Mrs. or the consumer in, in, in general, be mindful that there may be some recording devices and that we have no control over those devices can be inside, it can be outside. And, you know, they can, if there is recordings, they can record your conversations, your dislikes or likes about the property. And more so if you're trying to strategize a, a potential offer. So the seller might be able to have that information and position themselves to either consider, counter, or accept your offer. So the, uh, the form uh, itself, it's just a disclaimer and also is a, a protection for you as the, uh, the buyer's agent that any and all conversation should probably be done after you uh, exit the uh, property, don't have conversations inside because you just never know who may be listening to your conversation, okay? Or even recording. So be mindful of it, have the conversation outside or maybe at another remote area. So that way no one can hear your strategy and your position when, when it comes to uh, submitting an offer. Number two talks about uh, visitor safety, okay? And advice to be aware and watchful of conditions on any property visitors and, and most likely to be unfamiliar with the property, terrain, layout, elevation, changes, stairways. Now, I got to stress and emphasize this because, you know, uh, I, I, I remember a claim 
that came in from an agent many, many years ago where the agent went to the property for the second time once he went with his client and then secondly, he went again to the property by himself and he knew or he should have known that one of the beams in the garage was short and the agent was about 7'2", seven, 7'3". Seven, he was a really tall guy. So when he went into the, to the uh, house to see it the second time, he, he uh, ended up hitting his head and then he filed the complaint um, and, and wanted the, uh, the company to pay for medical expenses and lost wages. So here's the big picture. The listing agent and the brokerage don't have that responsibility. It did not happen in the uh, dwelling of the office. It happened at a listing that one of our agents had. So the claim should have gone directly to the homeowner because the homeowner has insurance for you know, claims of uh, injury. He ended up escalating it. We got a letter uh, demanding us to uh, provide them with our e &O insurance. We ended up getting our attorney involved. And to this day, I think we're back and forth with negotiations. So the whole pr uh, uh, problem to protect you from a liability is to make sure that you're providing any and all necessary forms because you just never know when someone is going to claim a, a lawsuit against you or your firm. And having these protections will ultimately give you an upper advantage of, you know, saying, well, we had the buyer sign off on this. We had, you know, the principal sign off on this. We had the agent sign off on this. And therefore, we are not responsible for it. Okay. So number three talks about animals and pets. Visitors in advice to use cautious around animals and pets because they may be a, a source of allergies or exhibit dangerous, unpredictable behavior despite appearances to the contrary. So you just never know. These little chihuahuas is a prime example, right? They're small and you know they don't look vicious, but you get near them, they're very territorial and they'll bite and they bite hard. So again, you're putting that disclaimer is if you are the agent who represent the seller and the, uh, the sellers have pets, you know, obviously you want to lock them away and make sure that the pets are secure when showing any property. Uh, and then more so if you're not there on an open house, you know, maybe the, uh, the homeowners can take the pets, you know, for a ride. So that way there's no interruptions regarding that. Because again, there's pets that are uh, pets that do not like to be surrounded by many people. And if there's people coming in and out of the office, it may be a little overwhelming for the pets and the anxiety may kick in where they may be a friendly dog, but because there's so many people, they may get uh, overwhelmed and may attack someone. So, you know, just keep that in mind, you know, when it, when it comes to animals and pets. And then accommodating minors, obviously, and the risk of injury. Upon entry in the property, visitors acknowledge the risk of injury resulting from unfamiliar with the property visitors advice to exercise cautious, okay? So again, great uh, form to have as part of your open house advisory as uh, you know, something that you wanna have you know, the consumer that's coming in sign. Now this form may be obsolete as well. They may say, you know, we're getting rid of all these uh, uh, advisories and anything in relationship to the coronavirus that this form may not be. But this really doesn't talk much about you know, the coronavirus, this goes more into Mr. And Mrs. Uh, consumer buyers. Be, be aware that there may be some recording devices. Be aware that uh, you may not be familiar with the uh, home. There might be dark areas that you're not familiar and you don't want to trip and fall and uh, cause injury. Be aware that the uh, sellers may have pets, maybe dogs, cats, and you may be allergic. I remember once I, I went and I was seeing a property and immediately I'm allergic to cats. And what I started doing was my eyes started bulging out where I literally was tearing blood because I was itchy so bad. And then come to find out that the uh, homeowner had four cats in there. Okay. And I was allergic to it. So 
I, I immediately had to go to the doctors because I wasn't getting any better. And I, I couldn't even see from, from my left eye because of the uh, reaction I got from uh, being allergic to cats. So again, all you're doing is putting disclaimers. And obviously, you know, having us uh, minor children that, you know, that the consumer is, you know, watching, watching over their children. And then the last is the uh, risk involved in uh, seeing a property that they're not familiar with. Okay. Any questions regarding the property visit and open house advisory? Okay. I got a couple of chats here, but I don't know. I heard as of today, Pete will no longer need it. Get off my mic. Down. Someone no. says, I think that's a rumor. <laughs> um, here it is. Uh, looks official. California. I guess it is official. Hold on. Let me pull it up real Wow, well, it's not going to allow me to do so. Uh, I'll probably check it out after. <clears throat> so going back to the up to the forums. Someone had a question. I'm sorry. All right, you're welcome. So uh, Charles, thank you for the information. I'll check it out. All right, so any additional questions regarding the PVOH form? We're almost done folks, okay? So bear with me, thank you for being patient. And then the uh, last one as part of the open house rules and regulation is the guide and sign in, okay? So this again may change as of today folks, okay? I'm only giving you relevant information as it comes. Maybe on our next conversation, that may be totally, totally different, and uh, that may change, okay? But for the time being, this is what we have so far. So the open house showing guidelines and sign in. So this is the form that anyone coming in uh, to your open house must sign in. They have to print their name uh, and their signature, email, phone number, and time of entry, Okay. And if they are requesting a copy of this document, you must provide them a copy of it. How do you give them a copy? Just uh, take a snapshot, take a photo, and make sure that you are uh, removing anyone else on this list. Just take the snapshot or photo of the name of the uh, person requesting. So if you have, you know, five or seven names on here, you're gonna you're gonna cut and paste, right? You're not gonna show everyone's information, just the information on the re requested party. Okay. Property address will go here. The date you're hosting the open house. What if you're hosting two open houses, one on Saturday, one on Sunday? So you want to have one for Saturday and one for Sunday. And the reason is why the date is very important is because, again, if anyone contracts the open, uh, excuse me, the coronavirus, and now they're claiming uh, liability, you want to make sure when they came and saw the property, was it on a Saturday, was it on a Friday, was it on Sunday? Okay, you want to you wanna pinpoint that information. And very self-explanatory, folks, all persons entering the above property agree uh, to follow the broker's preventive plan, which can be, uh, can be accessed at the uh, address below. Agree to posting rules of entry, which is uh, access below, okay? Uh, make the following representation. To the best of the knowledge, you are complying. So basically you're complying with any and all of the coronavirus. If you feel sick, if you have any uh, issues of respiratory illness, cough, shortness of breath, uh, and you feel that you may be, you know, have the symptoms of Corona, then we and you need to not, not uh, be in the property or uh, allowed to be in the property, okay? Uh, you will be informed if after the day you enter, there's a change in health condition or knowledge that the uh, potential puts other risk. Okay, so the whole purpose too, folks, and this is how, this is how you can articulate your conversation. You're hosting an open house. You're from uh, doing an open house from one to four. And then uh, you had 75 people come in and you had everyone sign. So then a day later, you get a call from, uh, from, the list, from one of the agents saying, hey, I just want to let you know that my client that saw the property uh, contracted and was tested positive for coronavirus. Okay, your job and your duty is that whatever time they went in there, and this is why time entered is crucial, that anyone from that time that this, uh, this client went in or you know, a person went in, that you need to follow up with the rest of the people that went in. 
So if they were the 50th person and you had 75 people, guess what? You're going to have to call 25 people and tell them, hey, we just got win that uh, we found out that a, uh, a party that came in around three, uh, 345, let's say, um, tested positive for coronavirus. You know, I'm encouraging you to also go and take the test, you know, to make sure that you're okay. So that's part of your responsibility for you to at least acknowledge and disclose to anyone that had seen the property right after the person that actually was contracted with the uh, virus, okay? And that's, uh, again, that's a way of having that conversation. The restaurants were doing that for a long time, you know, in case someone does contract the uh, virus, their responsibility is to reach out to the uh, consumers that were there at or after to let them know, hey, you know, we had a consumer that did test positive for, uh, you know, the COVID-19, Therefore, we're just uh, disclosing for you to go get checked and see, okay? And that's the uh, that's the form right here, folks. <clears throat> Any questions regarding the open house and showing guidelines? Okay, Mona, you had a question. No, sorry, I think I just forgot to put my hand down. <laughs> oh, okay. Any anyone else? I do okay. have a little question. So obviously we're all owned by the same broker, but we're in different offices. So me in Calabasas, can I call someone in Westside and host their open house or would I not be covered under the ENO? That's a very good question. I would say you would need to speak with your broker, <clears throat> ask the broker, the broker should have access to their ENO insurance and see if the uh, ENO insurance supplement allows you to host other um, brokerages because each office may be owned by, but they may have separate insurance carriers. Your Calabasas office may have one insurance. The uh, West side office may have a different insurance carrier. And, you know, Calabasas may say, no, you cannot host, you know, other parties uh, or other agents open houses, but West side may say, you know, we're fine with it. So you, you got to reach out to your broker and the broker should have, you know, the answer to the uh, to that question. Okay. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. So really, what I wanted to, um, you know, talk to today was basically the forms and how to approach them and the responsibility as as an agent. You know, as we conduct more and more classes, we'll dive in deeper on how to, you know, effectively host an open house, how to prepare mentally, uh, what do you do prior, what do you do during, and what do you do after. So these are topics that we will, in the future, we 